Hey guys, Ken Scott, back with another episode of something I think you guys may find interesting. As you guys know, I am a senior U.S. Immigration Law Intelligence Analyst with Triple W, U.S. Entry Waiver Services.com, and we resolve all of your USA border crossing issues. Today is July 30th, 2022, and apparently it's about 30 degrees outside, and that is extremely, uh, extremely atrocious for me. It's way too hot. I'm more comfortable in a 20 degree and below, possibly even 15 degree Celsius. Anyway, so today's video is titled, Why Would You... Why would you be de denied entry at the USA border? Now, this ties into what I'm phys literally wearing this very moment. What do you guys see me wearing? Well, I'll give you guys a quick look. Oh, and by the way, this is uh, a green screen, an actual green screen that newscast, uh, well, news media and other organizations use to project a, uh, a background, so to speak. You guys know what a green screen is. But how many times have you seen a YouTube video where they've actually shown the green screen? Well, hopefully I, uh, this is a trend set uh, and you can see the green screen behind me. The reason why I'm showing it is because the fact that I don't think anyone would even do it because they want to give you the, the illusion of a background. I'm showing you the green screen, which also ties into the transparency that we have. We talk to you guys about border cases. Okay, so look at my beautiful outfit. Oh, this went blurry. Oh, shit. Why is it going blurry? Right, I guess I'll stand like an ape. Okay. And you guys are wondering, why the hell is Ken wearing such an atrocious uh, T-shirt? Part of it is to show, make, let you guys understand how um, the border will view you. Now, for example, and it also ties into the title we said. So, so let's say you go out to the border, you're dressed like this, T-shirt full of more holes than the Titanic. And uh, let's say ball cap, uh, we'll use this one. Like that. Or even I'll go like this, cock to the side, cock back. And these. Now, what do you think the guard thinks if if I walk up like this or drive up like this? Again, let me again, let me maybe I can give you guys another look. So holy hair. What's with the damn? I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway, you guys get the picture. He's gonna think. And the guard's going to ask me, where am I going? Where are you going? So, you know, so I was, oh, I'm going um, shopping at Bellas Fair Mall. He said, oh, well, it's 10 a.m. in the morning on a Tuesday. You're going shopping 10 a.m. on Tuesday. He's going to listen to what I say. And he's going to, he's actually going to, he's going to profile me how I'm dressed. Now, what do you think the guard's going to think? He sees me dressed like this. And he says, where do you live? Oh, I live on, uh, uh, I live in East Van, around the Hastings Street area. He's going to look at my skin tone. He's going to look at what I'm wearing. He's going to say, well, what do you do for work? How much money do you make? So if, if uh, he pulls up my wallet, I pull up my wallet and I've got, um, I've got this in it. Why is this thing so blurry? Oh man, can't get the blurriness out. Well, you guys can see, you guys know what I mean. I didn't realize it would do this. Anyway, so I have two of these in, in my wallet. What do you think the guard's going to think? And I say, oh, I do um, uh, work at Labor Ready, where we, we do on-call jobs. The guard's going to think. He said, where do you live? Well, I stay with friends. I don't have a, I don't have a flat living. The first thing he's going to say is, yes, yeah, sir, I think you, well, who are you going to see again? Oh, I, I'm going to visit friends. I thought you were going shopping at the mall. Oh, yeah, sorry, sir. Yeah, that too. Automatically, I'm going to secondary. He's going to start digging. He's going to start digging. He's going to start digging. Then he finds out in my phone 
that I'm actually going down to um, Everett, Washington to help some buddies on a construction project to pay for cash. He's going to give me the five-year ban for misrepresentation and also the uh, ban under the 7A category for intending immigrant or immigrant without a work visa. And I'm automatically turned around. He, now, he got to this point by looking how I dressed. And because of the fact that I had hardly anything in my wallet, he found out that my work history is spotty at best in Vancouver. That's why he denied me entry. And it ties into why would you be denied entry at the USA border? All right, guys, now I'm going to throw some, I'm going to throw some scenarios at you. That's one. Let me just do this. All right, just give me a moment here. Now, th this is actually what this part of the work we do, I actually like the most because um, I studied drama, you know, I studied acting, and I actually thought about getting to that career first before this stuff, before I got into law enforcement. And because the thing is for me, because I was a law enforcement officer, federal officer and trainer, we had to do this all the time. We had to train people. And I like to say that we were very effective at it. Well, I know I was. And the guys, the officers I trained were top notch. Some of those guys are gone. Some are still around. So, but what's happening now is the guys that they're hiring, these officers are not as, um, uh, I would say as good or as skilled as they could be. It's a lot of factors involved, but it all boils down to the lack of training and in all honesty, management. If you have poor management, then you've got problems with any workplace environment. So now you guys have already basically been many officers for a second there, and you just saw how I was profiled based upon what I was wearing. Now, let's see here. Okay, now let's fast forward. Now let's just say I come to the border and let's see here. Well, forget it. So I come to the border. I can't find what I was looking for now. Yeah, it's not a problem. That's too bad, though, because that would really. And this is why I like these videos, because everything is just like on the spot. There's no rehearsing. There's no yada, yada. It's I find that when you do it like this, it's a lot better because people can see the reality of it. And it's not just basically it's not scripted. Oh, well, I can't know what happened to those. I don't know if I can dig around for a moment here. Learn something quickly here. That's all right. I know what to do. Got I got the solution. So this this tie again, this all ties in to the video because you guys need to understand what you're up against. You go down to these uh, these borders and you deal with these officers. They've had training in certain areas as such. Problem is, like I said, some of these newer guys don't know what they're doing and they will unnecessarily hassle you. And the only crappy part about that is nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. It's a crappy thing, I, I will admit, but it is what it is. Okay, so now, so now I pull up to the booth and I'm dressed like this. Oh man, okay, sorry about that. Anyway, so I pull up to the booth and I'm dressed like this. You guys can see what I'm wearing. I don't know what's up with this fading in and out.
something about maybe it's too close. There we go. It's a lot. Well, yeah, anyway, you guys get the point. There, yeah, that's the best I can do. So I pull up just like this back in my in my Lambo. Now, what do you guys think they're gonna think if I pull up just like this? And they're gonna ask you, say, sir, what do you do for work? I said, oh, I, I live in Surrey and I do um, I do um, house cleaning. Do you guys think for a moment they're gonna buy that BS? No, he's not gonna buy that. He's going to say, no, nah, so you do, I think you do more than house cleaning. How much money do you have? So then he, uh, I said, well, sir, I said, I don't know, sir, I don't, I don't have that much with me. I said, I only have this. And then he's like, what do you do for work again, sir? I clean houses. How much do you have? And he, he counts all this. And he says, so how is it you have all that in your pocket, but you do house cleaning? I said, sir, I have no clue. I said, uh, I clean homes. Where, do you, where are the homes that you clean? Uh, Abbey in uh, Vancouver. I said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Guys, what do you, he's going to think I move weight. You may even ask me how much of that outfit cost you're wearing. I said, eh, about six, seven hundred US. And he said, How is it a house cleaner is wearing nearly a thousand dollar outfit, has thousands in his pocket, but he's a house cleaner in Surrey? It doesn't fly. So, again, I was just profiled based upon what I'm wearing and uh, my mannerism. And he says, how is it that you're going down here on a Tuesday at 10 a.m., but you clean houses? Would you not be at work? And I say, oh, uh, I clean in the evening. Hey, it's not going to fly, guys. But again, this ties into the title. Why would you be denied entry at the USA border? He's going to profile me as someone who moves weight or, um, how can I say, is a facilitator of women, you know, uh, the do massage, also known as pimp. He's going to, that's what he's going to think when he sees me. And he's also going to base it likely on my skin tone. All right. So now you guys have seen that. And I don't want that thing to fall. So you guys are starting to get the picture that these are some of the reasons why you can be denied entry to the USA. They're going to go by your appearance. They're going to go by uh, one of the things the academy they taught us and we used to teach people is when you ask the person questions, so I just found something I was looking for, but when you ask the person questions, you also look at how they're going to respond. You look, you observe their body language, especially, I won't give you guys all the details because we, even we still use it when we talk to clients, but you, you analyze their certain body features, where it usage, tone, et cetera, et cetera. And then based upon what they say, based upon uh, the circumstances of the day, like for example, why is this person crossing the border at 1 a.m. going shopping the next morning at, uh, I don't know, 9 a.m. They don't know where they're going shopping. They don't know, um, they don't have uh, a place to go. This person says, oh, I'll just grab a hotel later in the evening. That right there is a red flag. It just doesn't make sense. But you'd be surprised as to the number of people who who make this mistake. And again, the first thing the guard does is he's going to look at how you're dressed, how you carry yourself. You guys would be surprised as to the lack of people who know this. A lot of the girls who do uh, accuse of massage up here in BC, they run into this all the time because they cross the border and like, like the sports bra, halter tops or tube tops, maybe with the Daisy Duke shorts or shorts in general, wearing, you know, lipstick, other cosmetics, and um, lots of, you know, jewelry and accessories. And you guys, I don't want you guys to think, you're saying who in the hell would be, I won't call them names, but who would be that, let's just say blind. Well, you guys would be surprised as to the number of people we get, massage girls accuse of massage, who have, um, um, who go to the border dressed like that. And yeah, it's a big mistake. Yeah, they get caught. But you know what? When the day's over, they only have themselves to blame. Now, the guy comes to the border dressed like this. 
and wearing these. You guys are, uh, now here. I look like a businessman. Now you guys saw the three outfits that I I just put on. I look totally different in each one. Now the guards asking me, so so sir, where are you going uh, today? I said, well, uh, I took the day off from work. It's about eleven a.m. So I wanted to meet up with some friends in uh, Bellingham. We're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go look at some boats for sale over at. Uh, uh, I don't know, let's say Seattle. And then after that, I'm probably going to spend the night down there, you know, with them. And then I'm just going to drive back to, uh, I would like to drive back to Vancouver tomorrow. Okay, what do you do for work in Vancouver? Oh, well, I'm, I'm an assistant manager at a construction company on um, uh, Hastings Street, let's just say. So, okay, okay. Now you see how I'm dressed. I fit the profile of an assistant manager. Or well, we won't even say construction, we'll say whatever business. But when you're assistant manager or when you, I mean, construction, that's still a profession, but I want to get like an office percent profession. Um, office clerk with the city of Vancouver, let's just say. That's very plausible. Even if I say I'm, well, I'm a casual, I get called on, on a casual basis. That's very plausible. So the outfit fits this, the story that I'm giving. Here's the catch. The catch is, he says, oh, how much money do you have with you? And like I said, we'll, uh, I think I said, I said, we're going to look at boats, but look, he looks at my wallet and all I have is this. Oh, why is that so faded? Oh man, that's the best I can show you. You guys get the point. He's thinking, well, how is it this guy's coming way down here? He only has $20 in his pocket. He's asking me how much money do I have on my credit card? I said, I think I got about $60 on it, you know, space available. How much do you have in the bank, sir? I'm about $150. It doesn't make any sense to him. So he's going he's gonna to scratch his head over it. Then come to find out, he, let's say he does a, um, he checks closer. And he finds out I been, had been charged with fraud, let's just say, in, uh, in Vancouver. Charged with fraud twice, but never convicted. Now his radar is going to shoot shoot up to the moon he's gonna realize it's gonna go sky high because he's gonna say this guy is a possible fraudster and then he's gonna ask me about the offense i'll probably say the wrong thing about it so yeah i did fraud i uh i bought a car i tried to burn it but i got caught when the rcp officer saw me holding the petrol can ready uh splashing petrol all over the car to get it ablaze he said aha because I admitted to the elements of the crime, I'm denied entry and now have criminality and need a waiver. So when you guys are asking the question of why would you be denied entry to the USA? Well, again, first thing, they're going to profile how you, how you look. Then they're going to check you out closer. They're going to ask certain probing questions. And then based upon the totality of circumstances, as they say in law enforcement, that's going to dictate what happens next. You're likely going to be denied entry. So you could be not denied entry for a number of reasons. This I just gave you a couple of quick scenarios. Um, I've seen them deny entry to people who were born and raised in Iran, but Canadian citizens, because the guard thought maybe they had ties to certain groups. I've seen them deny entry to women who they accused of doing massage work and they found ads on Leo's list. They've denied entry to people who they suspected they have had a criminal uh, charge or engaged in criminal behavior, uh, other words, the fraud. Um, the gentleman that you saw uh, uh, in the uh, black and the, the black and yellow tracksuit, um, that gentleman they think is uh, trafficking. And if he says, "Well, yeah, you know, I sold, I sold some, uh, uh, sold a little bit of weight, moved, pushed a little bit," he now needs a waiver because he admitted to the trafficking, even though even if it's only, I don't know, five joints, that's still trafficking. But the point is, you guys need to understand, you can be denied entry at the USA border for a number of reasons. Uh, the first gentleman that had the wife beat a t-shirt on, he was denied entry because they discovered that he was trying to enter the USA under false pretenses. But they initially thought he didn't have ties to Canada, like, well, strong ties to Canada or anything along those lines. So that's why he got pulled to secondary. So before you get denied entry, they have to pull you to secondary. They got to 
dig deeper and based upon whatever they find that's in the system or their determination will dictate next. So to answer this question of why would you be denied entry at the USA border? It's a number of reasons. If stuff does not match or doesn't look right, it's a problem. So the guy, again, not to be a parrot, but the guy in the first video that had the wife beat a t-shirt to holes, if he only had uh, this in his pocket, he's in trouble because the guard's going to say, well, how are you surviving, sir? You only have $10. The guy in the uh, black and yellow tracksuit who has all this in his pocket, all this in his pocket, he's he's suspected of moving weight, especially the tracksuit that's costing six hundred, seven hundred dollars before tax. But then you add in duty, I think duty was about uh, one eighty, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's close to a grand. Say, so why is the guy wearing virtually a uh, with this gold, say, let's say $800 tracksuit, he's got thousands of dollars in his pocket, but he doesn't have a really good reason why he's entering or his reasons is very uh, questionable. With a guy dressed like this, who the border discovered the guy had fraud charges, but he's never convicted. He's denied entry. So to answer your question for you guys, they can they can deny you entry for various, for various reasons. So if you want to know more, about this topic and you want to know how to uh i won't say protect yourselves or how to uh uh be involved with certain situations or how to uh find solutions let's just say to issues give us a shout at 888-908-3841 or 604-562-8140 now, the same guy who goes to the border with a suit like this, but wearing these. Now, this this totally throws the look off as well. Because now this guy looks like he might be a mixture of all three. He might be a possible kingpin. He might be a possible facilitator, a.k.a. Pim. He might be moving weight. He might, uh, he might even not have any ties and equity. He may have just been wearing his buddy's suit. You just never know. I mean, it just really depends on how you, uh, how the guard perceives it. So it's a really intricate business, guys. And because I was a former law enforcement officer, federal officer and trainer that, down in Washington State and other places, it gives us the experience to help get you guys cleared to enter the USA. And you guys need to always remember to try to deal with someone who's in Canada but well, when I say in meaning stationed in Canada, but who has the uh, experience of working for the American law enforcement system. So there's only one other gentleman I know of it. I won't say the gentleman's name, uh, but besides him, virtually no one else in this business um, has this experience. And I would say our experience exceeds his because we've had the federal and the state training. He's only had the Fed part, but we've had the federal and the state. So, and when you have experienced twice that, and you're also a, a former trainer, it kind of bumps you up even higher. So, and of course, I've got the street smarts from how, as to how I grew up, where, yada, yada. Won't bore you guys with that. Anyways, Ken Scott, senior U.S. Immigration Law Intelligence Analyst with 888-908-3841 or 604 604-562-8140. If you guys have any kind of border crossing issues, give us a shout at the info I gave you. Oh, at info at denied entry to USA.com. That's our email. Anyway, you guys give us a shout if you have any kind of questions regarding border crossing because we can sort you out quite proper. We've got seven locations around the world, including the one in London, England, which I was there for a bit. And we've just recently opened another one. So right now we have one location that we need to open and that's kind of getting that sorted out proper. But anyway, give us a shout, 888-908-3841 or 604-562-8140. For a second, I forgot the number. And again, Ken Scott signing off. And in the words of my Vulcan colleague, live long and prosper.